Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 7th June 2016. The first article is related to the recent convictions in Godra incident, especially Gulbarga case. Now this article by R.K. Raghavan, it explains the criminal justice delivery system in India. What are the problems it is facing? Now, remember this point. Now the first responsibility of the state is to instill a sense of justice. So the criminal justice delivery system, it fails to do this. Then a law-abiding citizen tries to go beyond the law and seeks for a quick justice from alternative sources. Now when he gets into doubt about the capabilities of the state, then it erodes the roots of the constitutional governance. In this context, India has a low conviction rate and then low FIR filing, overburdened judiciary, complex judicial process, lack of witness production. All these things, they are making justice a mockery and this is giving space for the alternative people or else the parallel justice delivery systems in India are illegal justice delivery systems in India. So in this case, the special investigation team was appointed to look into the Gulbarga massacre and out of eight issues, it was able to get the people convicted on seven counts. So it shows that a specialized investigation, which is on communal issues or any matter of importance, if performed without any political or local interferences, it can provide for greater conviction rates. So the SIT, which is appointed and supervised by the Supreme Court in, after Godra Riots, it was its work is remarkable in this context. Now coming to education, this is very important essay for your, or uh, the very important topic for your essay. Now. When I read this, it is so beautifully presented. It can become a basis for understanding how to write a good essay. Now in this case, first what are the goals of learning? So he immediately tried to give you, so what is his essence of the essay is going to be? So whenever you start an essay, I said to the students, there has to be a hook, a funnel, a thesis statement. So here he has directly started with a thesis statement on value education. He took the UNESCO and he said the objectives of learning according to UNESCO are four. That is learning to know, learning to do, learning to live in harmony and learning to be. So what he is trying to do is education has an intrinsic value. But in our Marx led education system, we try to correlate with it an extrinsic value, that is one thing. And the second thing is, so in education, it is meant to provide a production or benefit to the society. So in this case, he has taken various people such as Immanuel Kant, he spoke about Rousseau, and he even talk, talk, spoke about um, uh, Einstein. So all these quotes becomes very critical for us to write a good essay. Try to mug them up and remember them. Now coming to clear the air on FDI in retail. Now foreign direct investments are 100% allowed in single brand retail. So what is meant by the single brand? It has to sell only one brand. So Nike store, only one brand is sold in that particular store. So it means the company outlets, direct company outlets um, can be established with 100% of FDI is allowed in them. So now if the company is owned or consists of 51, more than 51% of foreign ownership, um, there is one clause. The 30% of um, the contents of its products have to be locally sourced. Now this is exempted for cutting edge functionaries or sorry cutting edge technologies. So, and the high technologies, uh, complex technologies. So, in this case, Apple, it wants to establish its own direct outlets. For this, it wants to get the permission from the government. Under this exemption, it likes to get the permission. 
So what consists of a cutting edge technology is not defined and it left to the bureaucratic discretion where it may lead to arbitrariness. And again, this compulsory procurement is discouraging the FDIs to come into India, that is one thing. And the second is, it is also against the National Treatment Clause of World Trade Organization. What is meant by this nationality treatment? So even a foreign agency, if it is establishing in India, whatever the treatment we give to the local companies and corporations, the same treatment has to be given to the foreign companies too. So this very provision is getting violated over here. So in this context, we can do away with this particular clause and it, it will encourage the flow of FDIs into the country. And coming to Prime Minister's recent visits, so you know that India wants to enter into NSG. NSG stands for Nuclear Suppliers Group. It is a cartel of 48 nations which decide on the supply of the nuclear fuel. Now, this NSG, it came against India itself. When India first did the nuclear tests during Indira Gandhi era, again as to that NSG has come into existence. Now, in NSG, they make all the decisions unanimously. The China, it, what it said is, unless India signs NPT, it cannot be a member of NSG. So, it is, India is not a signatory of NPT, non-proliferation treaty, saying that it is discriminatory. So, China has kept that as an objection. Now, there are certain nuclear uh, hardliners. These are Mexico and then Switzerland, all these countries. So, in this case, Prime Minister is visiting Mexico, Switzerland and the United States. Now, Switzerland agreed to support India's bid to the nuclear suppliers group. Then, only country that will be standing for India to enter into NSG now is China. Even when an NSG waiver for our nuclear deal was supposed to get, China in the last minute, it tried to swift its positions. But under US pressure, it finally agreed. Now US also supporting the India's entry into nuclear suppliers group. But as no commercial deal happened after India-US nuclear agreement, then how enthusiastic US to support India into NSG is a major question. So more than that, the other things which uh, Prime Minister spoke to Switzerland um, uh, President are now Swiss is known for a tax heaven. So in this case, uh, on black curbing the black money and tax information exchange, they initiated the negotiations. And along with that, uh, India also wants to take uh, Switzerland help with regard to the clean energy. So these are the various things. And UN Security Council non-permanent membership both of the countries they try to support each other's bid for that position and then Modi is also reaching to United States so what is going to be a discussion between Prime Minister Modi and President Obama so clean energy climate change and added to that India's membership to NSG and if possible bilateral investment treaties these can be the possible discussions between these two leaders. This is what is speculated. Coming to Africa reaches out to Indian states. What does this mean over here? If you talk carefully, yesterday we discussed about Guazo and Amaravati, part of Andhra Pradesh, where China province and a state